Number one, consistency across all of my various applications. I only have one set of key bindings memorized, and that is the Vim key bindings. I can use them everywhere because developers will either give you them out of the box, or they will offer you the ability to customize your key bindings in virtually every single terminal program. And that makes my life so much easier. I'm not gonna have that inevitable muscle memory gap of moving from one program to another program, and then I have to remember my shortcuts for this other program. I don't even have to think about, you know, am I gonna move the mouse to this particular option? Is this the right selection menu for what the option that I want is? I don't have to worry about any of that because the key bindings are the same. A lot of stuff is done directly via commands and it just makes life so much easier. And beyond that, right, a lot of developers are going to make these same logic choices and the same UI choices across various terminal applications, as opposed to graphical applications, which are often from huge teams of developers that have made tons of different various choices across the board and you're going to be switching from application to application every time you switch it disrupts your workflow number two scripting and automation okay when i had just switched to linux and i was using graphical interfaces for absolutely everything i did so many stupid things like sitting there and renaming files manually for hours and hours instead of figuring out a way to just make a shell script to do it and I get it, it's probably way more intimidating to figure out how to make a shell script if you're not familiar with, you know, Bash and the shell, as opposed to just sitting there and doing the same thing over and over for hours and hours until your files are all moved to the right places or all renamed or whatever it is. I get it, it's probably more intimidating. But at the end of the day, it will probably be way faster for you to learn how to make a shell script to do your basic processing from zero, from scratch. It will be faster for you to learn how to do that than it will be for you to sit there and do the same manual operations on files over and over and over. And I have so many friends who are still on Windows and they're always doing stuff like this where it's like, please just make a Python script to do it for you. I get that you're on Windows, but you can still use Python. You know, and it's funny because I literally know people who like, they know Python, they know how to do this, yet they still sit there and insist on doing these things manually, which it would be so much faster to just make a simple script, a simple automation to do it for them. Number three, configuration and customization. Graphical programs are notorious for not allowing the user enough customization when it comes to simple things like key bindings or color schemes in a dark mode or even more complex stuff like UI choices. A lot of terminal applications actually will allow you to customize as much as you'd like because a lot of the time the developers of these applications are the same type of user as the end user when it comes to wanting consistent key binds, consistent color schemes, dark modes on everything. Personally, I get my best work done late at night a lot of the time, which means I want a light mode during the day and a dark mode at night. And that is the functional reason for wanting dark mode, right? You don't want your eyes to get blinded. The same thing applies to color schemes, actually. It's not just about, you know, making everything look pretty and aesthetically consistent. Having a good color scheme means, first of all, your eyes are going to go to the right things on the screen, the right things are highlighted, there's a visual difference between different elements, and second of all, having a consistent color scheme across the board means that you're going to have less of a gap between different applications. Your workflow isn't going to be interrupted because you've got the same colors everywhere. You're not going to have, you know, this white application to this blue application to this gray application. Number four, system resource consumption. This is going to be an obvious one to any of you who are either on older hardware or lower end hardware because you can immediately imagine what the point I'm going to make is going to be, which is that graphical interfaces are so much heavier and consume so much more resource than a just pure terminal based program, whether that's going to be just running commands or a terminal user interface. Okay, either way, almost across the board, those are going to consume far less resources than a graphical interface, assuming they are well-written programs. Number five, remote work. And this is another pretty obvious one. Anytime you're going to SSH into a server and you want some level of visual feedback as you're working on whatever task you're working on, it makes total sense to use a terminal interface. And this is probably the one time that I'm gonna argue use a terminal interface instead of just pure commands because when you want some level of visual feedback or some level of a little bit more than just this thick command output that you're going to have to parse through, especially when it's just, you know, this black box 
box with this white text and you're you know struggling to read it it makes total sense to want to have some level of a user interface and that is where tui programs shine so in this case instead of saying you know go from your graphical interface to your terminal interface go from pure commands to a terminal interface when it makes sense to do so one counterpoint there is definitely a time and place for graphical applications. For example, when I'm editing photos, I want to have all of these visual, you know, buttons that I can press as I'm doing stuff. I want to have this visual tone curve slider. I want to have hue saturation adjustment. I want to be able to see all of this. And of course, I want the image to live update as I'm working on it. So it makes total sense for me to want to do that in a graphical setting rather than using something like image magic to do all of my, all of my processing workflow. And even just thinking about that, um, Ah, geez, I would not want to use image magic for my dedicated editing. What I do use image magic for is scripting, right? If I want to script batch apply some sort of processing to a thousand photos, or maybe I want to watermark a thousand photos, that is where image magic shines most. And of course, this is just going back to selecting the right tool for the job. Pick whatever makes the most sense on the particular thing that you are trying to do. Um, at the end of the day, that is probably the most important point that I could drive home. Anyways, that's about it. I will see you next time. Peace.